Hey, Web World, Scotty D. Thanks for stopping by Interface Webcast. Do you hear that? Listen closely. Shh, be very quiet. That's the sound signature of my studio. Yes, it's there. Even if you don't think you can hear it, it's there. Trust me. And I know my studio is not in its perfect condition right now. You can see behind me, I've got a little bit of construction going on. The walls are in disarray. The insulation is removed. The wood is exposed. But you see, even if those walls were perfect right now, the sound signature would still be there. I can promise you this. And as I can promise you, also in your studio, there is a sound signature. You see, unless you're stinking filthy rich and you've built yourself an anechoic chamber, your studio is not soundproof. I don't care what anybody's ever told you. It's not soundproof because it's almost impossible to make your studio soundproof. There are so many things that can ingest themselves into your recordings that make up part of your sound signature of your studio. So for instance, if you have a studio at your home and you have a fish tank, your fish tank pump resonates at a frequency. If you have lights turned on in your studio, they resonate at a frequency. If you have a refrigerator, a furnace, a neighbor mowing their lawn, somebody with a barking dog, all of these sounds can ingest themselves into your recording as part of your sound signature. So you need to do your best to identify what your sound signature is and then do your best to remedy it out of your recordings. Because unless you can hear a gnat fart or a mosquito burp, you can't hear most of the sound signature because it's at a frequency that most people's ears can't hear. You see, as we get a little bit older, and we get exposed to different noises and sound levels throughout our life, you lose a little bit of your hearing. And because of that, you might not hear what other people might hear. So you send out your recording thinking that it's perfect. And then somebody writes back and says, there's a weird noise in your recording. And you look at them really strange and go, I don't hear anything. Well, that's okay because your ears may not be able to pick up that frequency anymore, but it's there. So I'm going to show you a couple things today that will help you identify the sound signature of your studio. The first thing you need to do is record the sound of your studio. So what I did is I went into my studio and I set up the mic. I turned it at the level that I would have it if I was going to be recording a normal voiceover recording. And then I sat back. I didn't breathe, I didn't move, I didn't try to specially quiet things down, I just let things be. And when I did that, this is what I came up with. This is the ambient noise signature of my studio, my studio's sound signature. This is Twisted Wave. This is my preferred voiceover recording software. And all I did was just record the noise. Now, I'm going to turn down my mic right now and I'm going to play you this sound signature of my studio. And I want you to listen very carefully because it's pretty interesting what you will hear or maybe not. So I'm going to turn down the mic. I want you to listen. You're going to see this yellow line moving. That's going to show you that I'm playing the file. And no audio from this mic is going to ingest itself into what you're going to be listening right now. It's just going to be the ambient noise that I recorded in my studio. So let me turn down the mic. Do you hear that? That's the sound signature that I recorded. What? You're saying it's quiet? I know it's quiet. It's very quiet, but it's not sound proof in my studio. Now, my studio is sound treated pretty well. Now, let me just zoom in on this because in Twisted Wave, you can zoom in on the actual wave file or the wave uh, visualization of the file and see what it looks like. Now this is a lossless format. This AIF is a lossless format. So let me zoom in. Now I can zoom in all the way down to the sample rate of the recording. 
and you can see each bit of the sample and it's pretty flat but I can promise you that there is still noise in this recording and it ingests itself every single time I do a voiceover recording and let me show you how you can visually see what your ears may not be able to hear you go out and get yourself a visual spectrum analyzer software now I don't care if you don't use twisted wave that's irrelevant this is just my software of choice but what you do need to get is a spectrum analyzer and then some know-how with the software that you use to be able to remedy your noise signature so my spectrum analyzer of choice is spec it's a free spectrum analyzer and it's available for the Red Hat or Linux platform the Windows platform and the Mac platform so I like it because you can use it on any platform that is gonna be used for recording more often than not it's gonna be either Windows or Mac I don't know too many people that are actually using Red Hat if you are drop a comment below and let us know but this is your spectrum analyzer this is where you can get it I'll put a link in the video description below so you don't need to write it down you just gotta go below click on it and it'll take you directly right here and let them know that you've seen it here on interface webcast so let me go back over to my recording real fast to twisted wave and this is the recording as you can see it's pretty flat you got the chance to hear it and let me open up my spectrum analyzer this is spec it's my best friend when it comes to recordings because it can hear what I can't hear and let me drag in the file that I recorded the AIF of my ambient studio noise and let me show you what it looks like there it is let me zoom it in that's pretty astonishing what you just heard my ambient studio noise signature is this this is what it looks like and I can promise you every single time I do a recording it ingests itself into my recordings I can't hear it but it's there and let me show you what I mean by that this is a file that I recorded of me just speaking and this is what it looks like you can see the signature that was in the other file that's just the ambient noise is present in my recording so I had to do something to be able to remove the unwanted frequencies from my recording now in twisted wave it has the capability built in in a level of different um, audio effects that I can add into my recording I can also use those effects to help me remove things that I don't want in my recording so let me go up to my effects uh, area and you can see in the uh, twisted wave I can go to audio units and I can look at uh, a flat list of available audio units that are part and parcel of the Apple operating system and you can also add in your own uh, effects stacks as well these are just the native built-in effects stacks that I'm using here so nothing special here now I've got an effects stack built and an effects stack I'll show you how to do that in a separate video but an effects stack is all of the processing that I do in post to my voiceover recordings to make it sound as best that I can without over processing it that's the biggest thing that I see people do wrong is over process their voiceover recordings now what you just want to do is to slightly enhance but don't over process it because you know what I'm talking about it sounds very bassy or very tinny or very uh, wishy-washy in the mids um, these are things that are over processed recordings and trust me to a professional recording engineer or to a talent scout they can pick this up in a second so don't over process your recordings just enhance it a little bit if need be and remove the frequencies from your recording that you don't want there so in mine I've got an effect stack which looks like this the only one that I don't have in here because I do it manually after this is normalizing I don't normalize before because it just takes everything and it enhances everything including the stuff you don't want to be enhanced if you normalize it so I normalize on the back end that's my preference so in my uh, stack of audio effects that I use I use a high-pass filter I use a dynamic processor and I use a graphic equalizer 
That's it. Nothing really fancy here. So in my high pass filter, I've got two frequencies set up. I've got a 60 hertz and an 80 hertz. I like to process most of mine at 60 just because it's at a level to where I know I'm not getting too far up in the the uh, the frequency range that might adversely affect my recording. 60 is kind of a, a nice safe range for me. And then my graphic equalizer, you'll see that when I go down to my processing of the equalizer that I have set up for my voice, um, I've set it up with a 31 band equalizer. That way I can really fine tune things. And you'll see just a slight bump on the uh, the higher range just a slight bump on the lower range, and then I feather out and I drop off right around 63. And I do that so that I can have a nice smooth rollout of frequencies below that 63 that I don't want involved in my recording anyway because most human ears can't hear it, but it'll still be there. And then my dynamic processor, I use it more as a noise gate than anything else. So when I play back this recording, you're going to hear it but you're also going to uh, not hear it because it's been processed as I'm playing it to you now. So I'm going to turn down the mic once again and I'm going to hit play as it's processed through my effects stack. So let me turn down the mic once again and I'm going to play it and you'll watch the yellow line move. Some of it's going to be blocked by the effects stack but for the most part you'll see the line moving and I want you to listen real closely this time. It's a little bit different, right? Now, I'm going to let it play because I want to kind of explain what's happening here. You can see the high-pass filter is doing what it needs to do. The equalization has a nice feathering off. But the, dan the dynamic processor is really where the telltale signs of what's happening here. Because you can see that I've got a hard drop at around 60 on the uh, dynamic processor. And that red line that you're seeing there is not being ingested into my recording because it's cutting off at 60, 57, right? 57 to 60, somewhere in that range. And it's just doing a hard noise gate. Now, if I move this, you'll see the difference. So if I take this line on my noise gate and I move it over, you can see that where that red arrow is, is all of the noise that's happening and it's ingesting itself into the recording or, or to my post right now. So if I take mine and I just do my hard drop off, you can see that it's not ingesting itself anymore and it's acting like a noise gate. So let me stop this and show you inside of the Spectrum Analyzer what this looks like as it's processed. So this is the ambient noise. Let me go back and open up Spec. Uh, this is the ambient noise once again. Remember what we talked about earlier? And this is the ambient noise as I processed it through my effects stack and you can watch all of this go away a little bit ingested itself at the very beginning and then it's flat it goes away and I don't have that frequency anymore in my signature sound that's natural in my studio I can't get the natural sound out of my studio because it's there. It's the signature sound of my studio, and you have one too. Now, let me show you what it looks like inside of the audio sample again. This is when I was talking into the mic and not processed. And then I processed it again with my full stack of effects, and you can see that the audio signature of the studio is gone. 100% out of my recordings, but my recorded voice is still there. It's not affected negatively. And I know because I've ran my recording through a spectrum analyzer that when I send out my recordings, my auditions, they go out as clean as I can possibly make them in my studio. So I hope you found this video very useful helpful. The tips and tricks might enhance your recording experience. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please comment below. Let me know your experience as you're going through this. If you have any questions, you can question in the comments below as well as drop me an email. 
The email address is scott at scottydonline.com. Don't forget to share this video with everybody that you know because they might find it useful as well. If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, please do so. If you're already a subscriber, I thank you so much for helping this channel be the best that it can be because I know because you've subscribed, you've commented, you've liked the videos, you appreciate what I do. So I'm going to continue bringing videos like this to this channel and helping you enhance your recording experience. As I mentioned, I'll be doing some more videos on Twisted Wave, so keep an eye out for that, as well as other tips, tricks, how-tos, and product reviews. Until next time, we'll see you, Web World.